you're the one of the most traveled people in the world. What number of how, how traveled are you, Ernesto? 247. <laughs> Amazing. And that's not going to change because nobody else is going to beat that record while we're in lockdown. Anymore. Congratulations. Ever. So that's correct. But anyway, we, and this is what, one of uh, the things that Dave is going to be uh, talking about in, the, in a moment, which is how to switch into the uh, Wi Fi code. And I love this metaphor from Dave because he says, well, you know, whenever you arrive, whenever you're going to start having some sort of communication, uh, experience, whether it is a one-on-one, -on -one, whether it is a one-to-many, whether it, whether it is a, a one-to-millions, you need to understand who your audience is. Already James mentioned it. So that's why it's critical that you understand how this works. A lot of people call themselves uh, international speakers. I mean, I know a few American speakers because, of course, they like the international part that they say, well, uh, where, where have you spoken? Uh, I spoke once in Canada. And I go like, are you freaking kidding me? I mean, Canada is just next door. It's like if it will be the United States, what makes you an international speaker? Now, the way that you have to see things is globally. You need to understand the culture in most of these different countries. That's why this is so incredibly important, what we are going to be teaching you, which also is very linked to what we were covering. I mean, if we will simply understand that it's fine to be different, and that it's fine that everybody's not like us, we will be perfectly fine. So I was very fortunate to uh, be training with uh, Herd Hofstetter and with uh, von Strompeners when I used to work for the uh, training department of KLM Royal Dutch Airlines. And one of the things that was incredibly important for KLM was that you actually learn to know the cultures. So one, this is a couple of models of what the uh, different cultures think. So first of all, it's okay. The, the uh, personality, that's pretty much specific to individuals. And uh, your personality is affected by whatever you inherited and learned and whatever. Then it goes to the next level, which, of course, it's uh, specific to group or category. And, of course, there are things that you learned. It doesn't matter where you are. You will learn whatever your culture is telling you. I mean, you will be celebrating Christmas, not because, of course, it is programmed in your DNA that the 25th of December you have to celebrate I mean, it's a pagan tradition. I mean, it wasn't even the day that Jesus Christ was born. And sorry uh, if that was a spoiler alert, but that's exactly how things work. And then, of course, we go into the universal uh, inherited human nature thing. So there's a ton of things that we have to dive into if we actually see culture from the uh, perspective of psychology. Now, what I'm going to be sharing with you right now in a very fast uh, way uh, it's going to be uh, a little bit uh, how you can actually get this done. And Dave, I mean, we both understand how important all these all these bits and pieces are on the culture. I mean, we just don't normally judge anybody by their skin color. We don't judge anybody by their uh, nationality or by their way of thinking. I mean, we always are trying to figure out, well, who, I mean, there's so many incredible things that we can learn from the culture. Right? Well, not least the fact, I mean, even in Dubai, where I've been in Dubai for 25 years, if you're a car salesman, then you can't judge anybody that walks into your showroom because sometimes you'll get a, a local Arab guy walking in with ripped jeans and a baseball cap back to front and a, and a vest and just maybe some flip-flop sandals on. And you might think, why is this guy coming to a Lamborghini garage? I don't even know if he can afford anything. But it might be somebody who's so rich, he could buy the entire garage inside out. And often they turn around and say, I'll have green, blue, and uh, red. Can you send them to this business card and leave? So you never know. You can never judge a book by, the co by its uh, cover because so many people have layers underneath. And they're the ones you really should be looking out for. Yeah. Talking about, uh, talking about books, um, as I was mentioning, we're going to be mentioning a, a number of things for you to prepare because obviously, I mean, we, we cannot give all the training, but I think we're going to also be sharing with you several elements that you can also train yourself and continue reskilling yourself. One of the books that I strongly recommend for you to read is called Riding the Waves of Culture. It's written by Fon Strompeners, and uh, it will help you understand not only, you know, the... the uh, uh, Chinese or the Indian or the blacks or the Jews or the whatever, because then, of course, you're putting everything on a box. 
What happens is that you need to understand that there's several things which are uh, a lot easier to understand if you understand a model. And this is what is very powerful. I mean, we recently, Dave and I learned that by using Venn diagrams, we can actually really explain things which are very complex. So this is a great model on how you can actually see the uh, different cultures. There's only uh, a few elements that you need to understand from every culture. I mean, some cultures are universal. Some, picture, some, girls, uh, some uh, cultures are more particular. Some cultures are more individual. For example, in the United States, everything is about individuality. However, in places like Spain, it's more about collective. But on the other hand, if you do not understand the little intricacies of that, you can also see it. Well, you know, Mexico sounds like if it is a very collective country. However, it is not like that. It's actually a very individual country. How could I know and how could I see an example? For example, Mexico never wins uh, a sports team, uh, sorry, a sports event. They are very good in individual sports because that's their culture. But that's why this is so easy, so easy to understand when you know exactly where to look. Some are very neutral, like, for example, the German, the Dutch, the uh, Scandinavian. Some of them are very effective. They like affection. So you need to understand how these are. Some of them are, some of the cultures are driven by achievement. Some of them are driven by ascription. So how do you actually uh, feel um, much better? See, for example, let's say uh, the Americans are very achievement oriented, but the Filipinos are very ascription oriented. I mean, they feel great if they accomplish a task. They don't care how much they achieve. They feel great and they are congratulated because they actually uh, got a uh, accomplish a task. Some uh, are very specific, some are very diffuse. I mean, in Germany, incredibly specific, or in Japan, I mean, if they tell you the trains, the train, you're going to be leaving at uh, 9.17, at 9.17 the train will leave. However, in, uh, in uh, Venezuela, if you go to the train, and uh, then they say, well, it will, it will leave around 9.30, 9.45. So that you can see that there's some difference. There's there's cultures which are sequential, which co which uh, which are uh, or cultures which are also synchronic. There's co cultures which are inner directed. There's cultures which are outer directed. So one of the things that I definitely recommend you to do is read that uh, specific book of the uh, Riding the Waves of Culture. For some reason here, I see that Dave disappeared. <laughs> so Dave, are you there? Why is this so incredibly important for speakers? Right now, for global speakers, let me just show you what happened to a company called Disney. They only have theme parks in the United States. One was in California, the other one was in Florida. And they said, well, now it's time to expand. They went to Tokyo, they uh, partnered up with some Japanese, and they made uh, a great uh, success out of Tokyo Disneyland. But what happened when they went to Paris and they did not understand what is uh, the importance of culture? Have a look. At the top of the showbiz headlines, the Premier of France and the president of the Disney company signed a multi-million dollar deal today to open Euro Disney in France. The agreement comes after two years of negotiations, during which Disney agreed to give the new park a French flavor. Set to open in five years, the world's fourth Disney playground will occupy 4,400 acres of what is now farmland, 20 miles east of Paris. As part of that cultural compromise, Mickey will still be Mickey and Donald will still be Donald. But in Euro Disney, Goofy becomes Dingo and Snow White will be called Blanche Neige. Liz? Just one year after becoming chairman and CEO of the Walt Disney Company, Michael Eisner announced plans for a Euro Disneyland to be constructed near Paris, France. This seemed like the next obvious step for international expansion. There was only one problem. They forgot to ask France. While the project was built in coordination with the French government and French contractors, 
Clearly, the head of public opinion polling at the Walt Disney Company phoned in his report or was fired after reading the results because the citizens of France were very much not on board. Many prominent French commentators expressed distaste for what they saw as a capitalistic invasion of their beautiful countryside, some going as far as to promote burning the resort down and describing it as a cultural Chernobyl. The CEO of the resort, Robert Fitzpatrick, attempted to assuage the situation by explaining that the company didn't come in and say, okay, we're going to put a beret and a baguette on Mickey Mouse. So there you go. This is exactly what happens. I mean, not because you're going to put a beret in Mickey Mouse, you're going to really know the culture. Now, once again, this is so critical, and I think this leads to the next segment that uh, Dave is going to be uh, explaining. I, I, You look a little bit blurred, uh, Dave, so I hope that uh, we will be able to... Uh, are you still with us? We cannot hear you, Dave. You are... Uh, you're not... Uh, we cannot hear you. While Dave, while Dave come back, let me just show you a short video because I've been talking about Fons Trompeners and uh, possibly you have never heard of him. So here is uh, Fons Trompeners explaining the importance of culture. Have a look. Because human beings are in essence social animals, culture becomes enormously important in defining the way they interact. And that affects our business too. imagine that 60% of mergers and acquisition fail because they ignored culture? The success of business is really dominated by cultural understanding. How do we recognize those differences? How are decisions made differently? How do we communicate differently? How do we build trust between people? In this program, I want to transform my concepts and tools into very practical applications. We take here four R's. First, I'll help you recognize cultural differences. The tools and concepts will help you to respect those differences. Once you respect and recognize the differences, everything turns into a dilemma that you need to reconcile. And then finally, attention is given in how do you realize and root the reconciled statements into practical action. A better understanding of cultural differences will help you to improve your business. It will involve your stakeholders and it will lead to measurable results. Good luck in applying.